Welcome, welcome, welcome to Discovering You Again with Susan Axelrod. I am delighted to be with you here today. It is a busy week. I know I'm feeling it too. Do you feel it? All that scurrying around, spending time with family, the holiday season, cooking, cleaning, shopping, wrapping, cleaning again, and cleaning again. I have felt it myself, and I decided that I would use today's show to give us all a breath. I have been busy. It's been a very busy month for me as a coach. I'm working with all of my clients. I'm working to get new work next year. I closed out my online course. I'm preparing for my online course starting up again in January. There's so much going on. And I think I got out of kilter. Like, what is it, the expression off kilter? I think that for myself, honestly, you know, I always share and reveal my truth here because that's what we're doing. That's what we do with discovering you again. It's we share, we reveal, we share our truth, at least with ourselves. And of course, I'm here to share my truth with you. So I think what happened to me, I did have something happen. I talked about it in my last show It really set me back. Um, I did a whole show on facing life's blows with Dr. Pat. It was a great show um, I did last time. And we talked about how you turn your challenges into wisdom, how the challenges that you experience become the wisdom that you live by. And then I took it a step further and encouraged, and I implore people to share the wisdom learned. So I had that dilemma. I ended up losing that trip that we were supposed to go on, a beautiful trip to a to a faraway location because we had an expired passport. I think what happened to me was I was in this mental mindset. I was in a mindset that we were going to be going away <laughs> I was so excited. I work so hard. My husband works so hard. We do not go away often. In fact, the last trip we took of that nature was uh, five or six years ago. And so, or more, six or seven years ago, I think. And so I think that I had just really sort of glommed on to the idea that we were going to be away on a beach and, you know, it's kind of off the grid and and just on our own. Well, when I lost that trip, I really got, found myself to be in a altered state, the likes of which I hadn't seen in a very long time. And ultimately, eventually, I realized I got off center and I was feeling ungrounded. So the conversation that we had last uh, in my last show with Dr. Pat was about life's blows and life's challenges. And of course, everyone has them. And what do you do when you have them? How do you react to them? But for today's show, I decided to share what I learned, right? What did I say? You gain wisdom from life's experiences. And then I like to encourage us, we're the army, we women in midlife, women in the second half of life, we're the army of change. We're the army of transformation that is needed right now. We're the ones who have life's experience and the wisdom gleaned and gained. And so I decided that I would do what I'm asking others to do, and I would share my wisdom with you. The wisdom was this, I got off center, I got off balance, I really, I really got knocked off to the side and I just could not get it back. It took time for me to kind of realize what was going on. And then I have tools uh, for centering and grounding. And I was Honestly, I wasn't really using my tools. Come on, I got to be even more honest with my <laughs> with myself. I just wasn't. I could barely even breathe. 
you know, now that I'm thinking about it, I could barely even take in that deep breath that I talk about, you know, you know, I really, I couldn't do that. I was in such a shallow breathing state. What happened then, since I couldn't access my tools, is I, I got, I don't know what to say. I felt like a bobblehead. I guess that's it. I got this feeling. Thank God I'm lucky I wasn't feeling any physical, you know, illness or problems as a result. Although certainly that can happen when you get knocked so off balance. But I, I just felt untethered. I think that's the word. I felt untethered. Can you see me moving like this if you're watching this on the, the Facebook um, live stream? And so I, um, I knew eventually that I would need to get serious about the tools that I would use or finding them or finding new ones, talking to someone, getting help where I could. I talked to my friends. I did speak with a therapist, someone I've seen before who has served me so well. I encourage everyone to have a, a therapeutic helping professional in their lives. It serves you at various times. I talked to my mom. I talked to my sister. I really, uh, but I didn't do any journaling and that's one of the things I'm going to talk about a little bit later. So eventually I began to swing, you know, I could feel the pendulum slowing, slowing, slowing and, and coming back to center. And then I realized that I had not been able to feel the stillness that I have learned has served me so well. When I thought about the day that this show would air, I decided that probably many of you are not able to feel that stillness right now either. It's wonderful, fun, and exciting. It's invigorating to be with family and friends and cooking and baking and, you know, giving gifts and receiving gifts and going to parties and, and all of that. Still and all for us at this time in our lives in particular, it's so important in order to stay grounded for us to find that stillness. I want to ask you right now, do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean by that stillness? I'm I'm lowering my voice. I'm not my usually excited, agitated self in my radio persona. I'm lowering my voice. I'm slowing my voice inflection. And I'm doing this intentionally because I really want this show to serve you, to give you a moment's breath, to give you an opportunity to just slow it down a bit to find that sense of calm, that, that space of calm inside you. I wanted to give you this as a gift for the end of this year. I wanted to offer you the opportunity to take a deep breath in and let it out. In that deep breath, honestly, I really couldn't even do that just a week ago. I've been working myself and really committing and, you know, really wanting to find, deeply wanting to find that space of breath. And so I'm happy that I, I'm working on it. I wouldn't say that I'm, I'm there yet. I can feel a little bit that I'm still not exactly in the place that I want to be but I'm working on it. I'm committed to it. And breathing is one of those things that will help. So I am going to share a couple of my meditations with you from my book on meditations. I have the mark you can see. I realized that I myself have a resource that can be of help. Um, what happened was <laughs> When I was looking for the tools to use, I started reading uh, my own meditations book and I realized how helpful it was for me to read. I almost felt, I was thinking to myself, 
who wrote this? This is so helpful. I'm so glad to have this resource by my side at this time. And you'll see, I've, I've selected a, a couple of uh, meditations that I'm going to share with you uh, in a few minutes. Before I do, I wanted to talk about this book that uh, has also been a gift in my life. I have spoken about it on my radio show. However, I, it was very relevant for today, and that's why I'm bringing it up during this show, which I'm calling Stillness. This book is called The Healer Within. It's called The Healer Within. I'm repeating it because if you can't see, I'm holding it up for the Facebook live stream, but if you can't see it, it's called The Healer Within. That's H-E-A-L-E-R, The Healer Within. And it's by Roger Janke. And I'm going to spell that for you. J-A-H-N-K-E. Janke, Roger Janke. J-A-H-N-K-E. It says using traditional Chinese techniques to release your, your body's own medicine. So I want to tell you that finding this book has been such a gift for me. It's filled with research, studies, references, and it's very grounded in science, but it's also founded in the ancient art of Chinese medicine, which goes back thousands of years. And so these tools have helped me immeasurably. Just reading through the introduction and the first chapter of this book made me think to myself, could it be true? Is it possible? Is it possible that I do have in me exactly what I need for my own healing at this time? And as I read this book page by page, I could show you the pages. You can see they're marked. There's bookmarks in it. There's, there's notes written in it. I really engaged with the book. There's all kinds of things that are in here. There's pen writing in pen. There's uh, highlighting because I really am using it to serve my best self. I need to be in my best space because I have a platform that I use to help others to become inspired, to feel motivated, engaged, and impassioned in their own lives. And so I feel the responsibility and I take the opportunity to use my own tools and find other tools, whatever I can, to use in order to heal myself. And so um, what happened with this book is that as I read through it, I, fe I felt like I have, I fe I've been feeling like I'm reading about my own journey over the last 20 years. And it's been answering some questions for me about um, what's happened to me, how I got calm inside. And so I'm so delighted to share this book with you. It's so important. And I would love, love, love to encourage you to buy it for yourself as a gift this holiday season. So we're going to take a short break now. And when we come back, I am going to uh, talk about a couple of the tools that I use, and I will share a few meditations with you. So stay with me, friends. And let's, again, take a deep breath together, deep breath in, and long breath out. And when you breathe out, I want to encourage you to bring your shoulders down with intention. Okay, friends, stay with me. I'll see you on the other side of the break.
Hello, friends. We're back. I hope you you got me in the last segment. I'm so I'm so it's so important for you to understand the blessing and the gift of stillness, especially now, because today we still have a, another week or so of this year. And, and, and it's an exciting time with people taking vacations, family and friends coming and going, and there's going to be parties going on for another week or two. So I want to help you stay uh, mentally stable and calm and in a good place. And that's why I'm talking today about stillness. Every now and then, it's important. It's so important for you to bring stillness into your life. One of the things that happens is our minds, especially when there's so much going on in the world, our mind fills with all the different things. I'm moving my hands around for our radio listeners, all the different things. There's so many things coming at us all the time. And our mind gets filled and cluttered. And what happens when our mind is so cluttered is we feel chaotic inside. Ask me how I know. I suffered from this for so many years. It still happens to me. I, I feel it happening, you know, really with a lot of the world events that are coming on. I sit down and watch the news and I, you know, I feel it kind of showering over me, the darkness and the all the bad stuff, you know, that comes at you every day. And so the stillness can serve your mind to quiet. And that is the magic. That is the secret. It took me many years of trial and error and practice and failure, but real commitment and deep desire to get my mind to a quiet and then clear space. Along the way, I knew that you are, you should, that I should be meditating. It was one of those things that everybody said, oh, you should meditate. You know, if you suffer from anxiety, you should meditate. And okay, so now there's one more thing that I should be doing, right? I couldn't meditate. It was just something that was not part of my you know, way of being. But I did eventually learn how to create what I call a meditative space. I never learned transcendental meditation. I never did Kundalini or any of those deep other types of really deep meditation where you take 25 minutes or 45 minutes or whatever. But I learned to allow, give myself the gift of allowing my mind to quiet, allowing it to quiet more and allowing it to quiet more. And eventually as it was quieter and quieter and quieter, I realized that it was becoming clear. And that was the thing I struggled with the most. And that's what you hear so often when people talk about meditation. I can't clear my mind. So along the way in my journey, I did finally figure out how to get quiet. I did finally clear my mind. What happens when you clear your mind is then you can listen. You can listen to the silence. And that stillness is what gives you that breath. When you're listening to the silence, when you can feel the precious silence within you, it allows your whole body to just calm down. The synapses just quiet down. And that's the space that we're looking for in this moment. And that space is what you want to learn to find so that you can call on it when you need it. At any time, once you achieve this ability to quiet, 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 get clear and clear and feel the stillness and then listen. What happens then is that your soul speaks to you. Your soul speaks when you can feel the stillness. 
And that's when you can really truly begin to create the life that you want. When you're in the full, total, complete, full honesty with yourself. So what I want to do is I want to read a meditation for you now that I think is relevant to today, but perhaps it's relevant for all time. My meditations came to me after I learned how to get quiet, get clear, find the stillness and listen. When I started listening, I heard these meditations come down to me in full form. All the meditations in my book came to me in full form. There was no editing, maybe a word here or there, but hardly even. That's why I call them divine downloads. When I get something like that in full, I know that it's really not just coming from my mind, from my thoughts. It seems to be coming from another place. So the first meditation that I want to read for you is called There is Light. So I want to invite you to stretch your body up, stretch your back out, Open the front of your body, which opens your countenance, and really give yourself a good stretch and take a breath in and breathe it out. And every time you hear me say breathe out, I want you to bring your shoulders down intentionally. So this is the introduction, a very brief introduc introduction to this short meditation. Can you feel it? It feels like there's so much pain in the world. This meditation will help you move towards the light, towards the joy, if you allow it. Take a break from the pain and look towards the light. Now, if you'd like, you may close your eyes. You can lie down if you're able, or you can just sit comfortably. Whatever it takes for you to begin to find that quiet within. If you want, you can put your hand over your heart, whatever it takes for you to begin to find the quiet and, and reach for the stillness. There is pain in the world tonight. Acknowledge this, feel this. It's okay to feel sad for this and yet know too that there is light. Take a moment to breathe. Deep breath in and long breath out. And breathe again, deep breath in and long breath out. There is universal love. Do you believe this? Take a moment now to think. Do you believe in universal love? It is there, there in the light and warmth. There is a lightness of being in that knowing. Now, just for this moment, allow yourself to be free free from the stress of the day, free from the difficulties in life, free from the negativity of others, free from the sadness in the world, free to be okay just for the moment, free to allow yourself to move away from the sadness, from okay to good, and even from good to joy. Allow the source of universal love to provide the light and warmth and know, just know that it can serve you. Choose this knowing, choose this feeling in this moment. And if you choose, this is how you can feel now in this moment and in every moment, believing in universal love, in the light and warmth now from that knowing. I wrote that meditation after one of those episodes in the world that really shakes you to the core. I have to be honest with you and say, I don't remember which one. I don't remember which one, but I know, I remember feeling one of those big episodes that happens in our world, one of those big tragedies. And I remember trying to find my stillness after that time. 
once again, when these big things happen and we have things that happen in our own life, and then there are these world events that happens or something in your neighborhood, something in your community, something in our country. And then we lose the ability to find the stillness and we are shaken to the core. We are off balance and we are ungrounded. And so a meditation like this, it's simple, very clear. It can help you to remember there is light. Sometimes the um, feeling of being off center or ungrounded is a little bit like being in the darkness. Unfortunately, it feels to me like many, many people are suffering in the darkness today. I feel this very deeply. And it's one of the reasons that I use every platform that I have. I have this radio show. I do a daily Facebook Live uh, coaching mini workshops every day, daily live at five with Coach Susan Axelrod on Facebook at 5 p.m. Eastern time. I come on every day. Nobody tells me to. I don't get anything for it. But I am moved and inspired to give. I am moved and inspired to help remind people like I did in this meditation, there is light. So I hope that that meditation will serve you. I wanna encourage you to take a few breaths now. Deep breath in and long breath out. These breaths will serve you at this time while you're busy, 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 and while you may be worried about what's going on either in your life or in the world. We're going to take another short break now. And when we come back, I have another very special meditation that I'm going to share with you. So stay with me, folks. I'll see you on the other side of the break. There is light. There can be light if you find the tools and commit to finding the stillness in you 
that can serve you best in those moments when you feel so chaotic, when you feel like everything is going wrong in your life, or when you're deeply, deeply worried about world events. I know that many people around me, we talk about it all the time, the things that are going on in the world, and that it feels so out of my control. It just feels like there's so much big stuff going on that I can't do anything about. So in my Facebook Live this week, I talked the whole week about this idea. Your single voice matters. What will you say? And I want to tell you that I have learned this for myself. And that is what allows me, that is what helps me to sit here and have my own radio show and speak with you and share my voice and share what I've learned about healing. I, I don't have answers, but I do offer tools for you to explore yourself if you want to feel better, if you want to find the stillness. I have another meditation that I want to share with you now. It's a meditation that I wrote for a friend. These meditations, as I said, come out of me in full. Sometimes I'm writing them for a person. Sometimes they come to me and I just share them. Sometimes it's for a specific purpose. I actually, um, in my book that's called Meditations to Ease, Calm, and Inspire, a collection to activate your mind and soul, I actually have a meditation in here that's called... Um, in healing for all who have said me too. So when that, um, when all of those millions, millions, millions of stories started coming out from women about the experiences of their lives, I was shattered to my core. And, um, and a meditation um, for that came out of me in full. So I wanna talk about healing. I talked about this book called The Healer Within. And I want to speak with you about healing and share with you something I've learned that has been a big surprise for me. I have friends who are healers. They have healing modalities of various sorts and natures, but I never thought of myself as a healer. Over the last few years, as I've grown as an intuitive coach, I've heard many people tell me, you helped me heal. And when it happened, I sort of cocked my head a little bit and said, what? I'm not a healer. Until I realized I am a healer. I have the ability to heal myself and I have the ability to help heal others. So if you want to take another stretch, stretch your body up and back, take a deep breath in and a long breath out. I want to invite you to get comfortable, close your eyes if you want, and I'm going to share another meditation called I Help Heal. And here's the very brief introduction. Can anyone be a healer? Yes, if you know yourself, if you know your light, if you know your power to help. This meditation is to affirm your healing power to help others as we want to do. I will begin. I know my light. I help heal. Take a deep breath in now and a long breath out. And another deep breath in and long breath out. I sit here in total calm comfortable with a full and certain knowing of my place in the world. Take another deep breath in now and long breath out. Who am I? What am I intended to do here? 
I know that I am small, a speck in the great universe, a mite in the spectrum of all time. Yet I have learned that at any moment I might be the entire universe, the entire spectrum of time for one other who is in pain. I know pain and I can feel it in others deeply, emotional or physical. They hurt and I hurt for them. But I know I can help heal. In ways big or small, mundane or profound, I listen, I feel, I share. Pain lives in me. I face it. I love myself through it. I look for its source. I've learned its purpose, though I didn't plan for it. It helps me help others heal through pain. Take another breath now. Deep breath in and long breath out. I know my purpose. I feel God's light, his gift to me of my divine skill. But why could I not help without having experienced? Could I not love others deeply through their difficulties still without having felt? I wonder, I ask, I know it's okay. Dear one, Breathe through your questions and accept the answers. Accept your special gift, the light work of gently and compassionately helping others through their own experience. Sit in your calm, comfortable space with a full and certain knowing of your place in the world. Breathe again now. Deep breath in and long breath out. Know your light, you help heal. This is a big one for me, folks. In my world, growing as the intuitive coach that I am, growing as I am, using the tools that I myself used to get to a better feeling place, I have wondered, am I a healer? The ego in me says, no, you're not a healer. <laughs> Other people are healers. Other people heal. But the soul in me knows. And that's why I want to invite you to try to work, do whatever you can to find the quiet, to gain the quiet, to get clear to find that space where you can actually clear your mind and to find the stillness in you and then to listen, to listen, to listen to the silence, to find a way to be okay with the silence, even comfortable with the silence. It is in the stillness where you find that place of, ah, yes, I'm okay. And that's really what it is that we're looking for. So this is a busy time of year, but really isn't every time a busy time of year? As I said that just now, I got a big, big energy, a, a big energy hit just now. I felt the energy of the mothers <laughs> racing, racing, racing up the highway, you know, coming from work, going to pick up the kids or going, you know, from taking care of their parents, trying to get back to a meeting at work or from being in the second half of life, if you're retired, racing from one thing to the next that you said yes to. I feel the energy of that in the atmosphere right now. And so I know that is validation for me. That is validation for me that this conversation that we're having today is so, so important. I want to invite you to take that breath in and let it out. And when you let it out, you let your, you bring your shoulders down. And that really serves you to begin to bring the energy of your body down. Can you feel that? I can feel that when I say it. Can you see me using my hands? I really do have learned myself with my own tools that the use of your hands, which, whichever way you're using them can help you. And so I'm bringing them down 
bringing them down, bringing them down. In the, um, the book called The Healer Within, there are four modalities that he talks about. Um, the breathing and stretching is one of them, and gentle movement is another. M gentle movement is actually a, a form of healing. Yeah, it's called gentle movement. And so that's what happened just now. I could feel it when I'm bringing my hands down, bringing them down, bringing them down. So, okay, I might look like an idiot, but honestly, I don't care. When I'm in that space, if I'm in a line at a market, if I only had a few minutes, I'm rushing and I'm, you know, impatient and things, the chaos is beginning to rise, rise, rise. I just bring it down, bring it down, bring it down. I might stand there and take a breath, breathe in, breathe it out, bring my shoulders down. And I use the physical gentle movements of bringing it down. This is a really, really important tool that you can use. Nobody needs to know what you're doing. You don't need to make a big deal. In the book, The Healer Within, he says in the, in the chapter on gentle movements, that it was so funny when I read this because I've experienced it myself. He actually said that the, you can do any um, form of the gentle movements that he suggests and he says, if your physical body is not able to do the gentle movements, you can even think the gentle movements in your mind and they will serve you. Okay, we're coming up to our last break, spoke, uh, break, folks. I have a beautiful meditation to share in our last segment. So please stay with me and I'll see you on the other side of break. Hello again, friends. Welcome back. Discovering you again. I hope that these meditations and this conversation helps you to begin to discover yourself again. In my work as a coach working with women in the second half of life, I have found these tools to be invaluable. All the years of giving, 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 doing, 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 
it just all became so much. In just a minute, I'm going to read the, the last meditation I'm sharing with you today called Too Much. But that's um, really what, I, what I'm doing here today. That is the reason that I wanted to offer this show on stillness. Now, I want to let you know that in January, I am starting the next session of my online course called Discovering You Again. And in that course, we do it all. It's an eight-week weekly course for women in the second half. And I had we had a few dozen people between the two sessions that I offered in uh, 2019. And we just finished the last of the second sessions. And the women were all excitedly chatting with each other about all the new thoughts and ideas they've learned from this course, not from me, but by being in the course, joining up with each other in community and being provoked and activated to think about their own lives, to actually create the life they want. The very first session of this course is called Vices, Values, and Vision. And we face our vices, we reprioritize our values, and then we start off the course by setting a vision for life as we want it. I'm not talking about the big, overarching, long-term vision for your whole entire life. I'm talking about for right now, because I've learned myself that it takes one breakthrough after the next to really you know, just be on the path that you want to be on. So I want to invite you to look me up. My website is whatwillyourlegacybe.com. And right at the top on the announcement bar is the place that you can click to find information about the next course that is starting in January. If you listen to my show and you like the kind of information I talk about, the guests I bring on, the meditations that I do. We do it all in my online course. So I'm talking to you about this right now in the context of this show on stillness, because I have learned from so many of these women that it took committing to this, you know, weekly uh, course and being with other people and having the support and accountability to really take back their lives for themselves. All right, so enough about that. I wanted to let you know about it. In my next show, I'm going to bring on guests who spent the year with me in the course. I can't wait. I'm so excited. That show is going to be on December 31st, and I'm so excited about that. All right, let's go back to too much too much. Do you feel it? When I say the words to you, how do you, how do you feel? Can you feel it like buzzing through your body? I did. I felt that energy. I call it too muchness. Too muchness is a feeling. <laughs> and you know what that feeling is? Anxiety. <laughs> Again, ask me how I know. I know because I suffered from anxiety and depression, both. I actually went on medication. I was on medication for seven years. In the end, I was so lucky. I, I committed and I was able to figure out using tools and, and getting support from my husband and my children, my daughters, um, that, to really support me to be able to, to live in the way that I wanted to live. I did have to simplify, simplify, simplify. Yes, I did. One of the tools that I used was journaling. And I, <laughs> journaling was one, one of the real game changers for me. I have a, a thing, box filled with the journals from all those years uh, that I journaled away, excavating, 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 down, down, down through all the stuff that had built up in me until I really did find the silence and, and listen. And that's when your soul rises. And that's what I call soul connection. So um, I have created, they're on my website in my um, marketplace, single journaling pages. 
and they are beautiful. They're a dollar a piece. It's not, they're not expensive. It's not a huge thing, but they are beautiful. You just get them as a digital download. You can print out as many as you want. I have a journaling page called um, Gratitude Space. One is called Blessings Space. Another is called Fun. I have a journaling page to try to bring back fun in your life. And then my other one is called Time is Passing Anyway. And so they're wonderful, beautiful pages. I love, I really want you to go find them and I hope that they will serve you. Okay, so I want to just end the show with one last meditation. This is a good one. Let's take a breath again and blow it out. This meditation is called Too Much. This is the introduction. Life can feel overwhelming. So much going on around us, it is hard to find personal control. This meditation reminds you of the too much syndrome that you may find grips you in its grasp. It reminds us that using our breath gives us the control back and can bring peace within. Here we go. Too much, too much, too much. Take a breath to ease your mind. Deep breath in and long breath out. Too much, too much, too much. For just this moment, ease your mind from the overwhelm of the day, the week, the world. You have it in you to do this right now, here and now. Yes, you do. Just start with your breath. Deep breath in and long breath out. And become aware of your thoughts. What are you thinking now in this moment? Too many thoughts? Is it all just too much? Use your own body to ground you, to come to center just for this moment. Make yourself smaller for just this moment. It is okay to be small, not to be big, not to be brave, not to be fierce, not to aspire, and not to achieve. Just be small, in ease in this moment. Use your body to ground you. Start with your toes. Feel them on the ground, steady, solid, simply there. No pressure, no weight. Just your feet on the ground, steady solid, simply there. Scan up to your legs, your knees, your hips, the center of your body that is solid and strong, no matter how it looks, no matter how it feels. It is your core, solid and strong. Scan up further now, your chest, your shoulders square but comfortable, your neck straight but limber, your head, your eyes, your crown, open and ready to receive the energy that serves you in this moment. You are small now in your body only. Everything else is away, not in you, not on your mind, not on your heart, not connected to your soul. You are free. In this place, you can now expand. Take a big breath in and hold it and let it out. Feel the expansion of your chest and your innards. Big breath in and long breath out. Expansion, but not overwhelm. It is not too much. It is not too much. It is not too much. You are enough to absorb that which is around you. You are enough. You are now expanded, your energy glowing, shining, flowing out in ripples, vibrating around you, ripples vibrating out to the world to help others who are feeling too much. In this space, we can find the control we seek to simply be enough in this moment and the next and the next. To be enough, you are enough. You feel easier now in this moment and your ease ripples out in vibrations around you, flowing out to the world to support others who are in too much. Let's come back to center now with a deep breath in and a long breath out. Back to center here and now. 
Scan back down through your core, down through your legs, down to your feet, and out through your toes. Feel the ground solid and steady beneath your feet. You are grounded now, solidly grounded. You are enough. <sighs> okay, friends, that is it for today. I want to thank you so much for joining me. I hope that this show has served to offer you a moment of stillness. Please join me on December 31st. We're going to have the most fun show ever. It'll be at one o'clock in the afternoon, Eastern time. And we are going to talk about discovering you again. With best wishes, thank you. 